so this just arrived today. It's going to go in my office, but I realized I don't have a space large enough to film an unboxing. So welcome to my patio, my oasis from the craziness that is New York. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker, helping you find the right device to match your needs. And in this video, we'll unbox the new 2021 iMac. So the official color of this iMac is pink, as you can see from its front face and its stand. But when you flip it around, the backside is red. The packaging on the 2021 iMac is 96% paper. Even this handle is made from hand-woven paper. Notice it's also color matched to the iMac inside. All right, to open it up, let's flip it on its side and lift like this. Wow, there she is. And it looks like there's a hello message under its protective cover. To release the iMac from its secure slumber, just pull outwards on these two arrows. And on the count of three, two, one, lift. Oh, not heavy at all. Actually, I looked, it's less than 10 pounds. We'll do the unwrapping later, but you can see that its stand has a more rose gold finish and if you take a look back here, you can see some of that red peeking through. Okay, let's set aside the iMac first and see what else is inside the box. Looks like there are a lot of goodies tucked away in here. I see icons for the keyboard and some cables. Let's start with this welcome packet. I wanna see them stickers. First up is a quick setup user guide. And now for the stickers. Are they going to be pink? Yes, this one matches the finish on the stand of the iMac. One more. Ooh, it's red. Two color stickers. This one matches the back of the iMac. Nice. Red is my second favorite color, so this is definitely a keeper, but am I crazy? But I kind of want to get a blue iMac just so that I can get a royal blue sticker. First up is the keyboard. The keyboards that come with the new 2021 iMacs are color-coded to match the color that you choose. So this one is pink. Key size and spacing are just like the previous keyboard, except that the keys on all four corners are curved on one side, giving the keyboard more rounded edges and the illusion that it's smaller than the previous one, but it's not. Now, the big feature here and the one that I'm most excited about is the addition of Touch ID right here on the top right-hand side. Why is it such a big deal? It's not just about signing into your iMac. It's about being a fast and secure way of authenticating a password. So say you're shopping online and need to check out, all you need to do is tap your finger on Touch ID and check out is a breeze. I actually tweeted about wishing for this feature a few months ago when I started docking my MacBook Air and using it with a monitor. The new iMac also ships with a color braided USB-C to lightning cable for charging your keyboard and mouse. Now, if this were blue, I would definitely sequester it and use it to charge my blue iPhone. Some of you asked, can you buy the keyboard separately and will it work with existing iMacs? As of right now, the only way to get a colored keyboard, the one with Touch ID built in, is to get one of these iMacs. But I wouldn't be surprised if Apple added it to their inventory sometime soon. You can pair this new Magic Keyboard with any Mac, but Touch ID will only work with Macs that run on Apple's M1 chip. So currently that includes the new M1 Mac Mini, M1 MacBook Air, and the M1 13-inch MacBook Pro. And before we move on, some buying advice. The keyboard that comes with the entry-level iMac does not have Touch ID built in. Next up is the power brick. Notice that this too is color matched to the iMac. So mine is braided in this pink weave. As the iMac requires more power, you'll find that this brick is larger than say, the power brick that came with my 16 inch MacBook Pro. This 143 power adapter also has a built-in ethernet port. So if you wanna go wired, you plug the ethernet cable in here. 
Another buying tip though, the iMac comes in three configurations. The power brick on the entry level model does not have this ethernet port. So if you need it, make sure you look for gigabit ethernet before you add to cart. On the other end of the power adapter is this red connector, which plugs into the back of the iMac. Don't worry folks, just going to show you this close up, but stay tuned to the end of this video for that awesome red color. Is this the same as MagSafe? So magnets are used so that the cable snaps on easily, but this is very different from MagSafe that we used to know because that technology allowed you to tug the cable off without bringing the device with you. While it attaches with magnets, the cable is securely connected to the iMac. So look here, I can pull on it and the iMac follows. Thankfully so, because you don't easily want to yank your iMac cable off. Speaking of cables, also in the box is this power cable that attaches to the power adapter. Finally, let's unwrap this item over here, which from its shape is most likely a magic mouse. <laughs> yes, it is. Up front, it's glossy white like the original, this one I've had for many, many years now. But if you flip it around, it's also color matched. So mine is pink. Just like the new Magic Keyboards, there's no way to get this colorful Magic Mouse by itself, at least not yet. Now, if you're more of a Magic Trackpad kind of person, like me, Apple also makes color matching ones too. You can opt to get a Magic Trackpad instead of a mouse for $50 more, or get the Magic Trackpad and a Magic Mouse for $129. And I might sound like a broken record by now, but the only Magic Trackpads that you can get separately are those in space gray, and silver. All right, now for the exciting part, the grand reveal. Let's slide off this dust cover. The new iMac got a glossy sticker protecting the display and it says hello in red ink, of course. Let's peel it off. So this is our first look at the front panel. The screen is bordered by glossy white glass and underneath on its chin is pink glass. Notice there's no Apple logo up front. There's transparent sticky tape protecting all sides, so let's peel this off too. And finally, I shan't prolong your agony. Let's flip it around so you can get a good look at this bright red back. One final tug on this adhesive sheet. OMG, this is glorious. I love it. You know what? This deserves a montage. Roll video. This red back is the reason I chose this iMac. Now, I have to rethink my desk situation because currently I don't get to see it at all. By the way, if you're looking for ports, these four USB-C ports are all you get, two of which are Thunderbolt 4 ports. This is a huge departure from the selection of ports on last year's model, which included an SD card slot, four USB-A ports, and two Thunderbolt 3 ports. There's still a headphone jack, but it's over here on the left-hand side, definitely easier to get to. The power button is over here on the bottom left corner on its back side, and with that out of the way, let's power it on. I'll skip the setup experience, but I do want to show you some of the new wallpapers. Of course, by default, you get one that's pink and then red at night, but there are others that match all the other colored iMacs as well. The new 2021 24-inch iMac is available for pre-order today and starts shipping sometime next week. It's available in seven colors, all the colors of the rainbow actually, pink slash red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Plus, for those wanting something more classic, there's also silver. It's available in only one screen size, that's 24 inches, and this replaces last year's 21-inch iMac. This is the first M1-powered iMac to go on sale, M1 being Apple's own silicon. Apple still sells a 27-inch iMac powered by an Intel processor, but I'm pretty sure that will be replaced within the year, so my advice is to hold off from buying that model. The new iMac starts at $1299, but I think the mid-tier model that retails for $1,500 with four USB-C ports instead of two is the better value. Here's what pricing is like in Singapore. 
So I've been using this new iMac for about a week now and I'm just wrapping up my thoughts for my review. But there's still time for you to ask questions, so leave them in the comments section below. First impressions though, this is a stunning machine. I love the color options. They just brighten up any room. It's super thin and light, almost like an oversized iPad with a stand. I kind of wish these bold colors were on the front too, but I get how it's more pastel finish is less distracting and doesn't get in the way of the work that you have to do. I've been using as my primary machine an M1 powered MacBook Air for what feels like almost half a year now, which is the same chip that powers this new iMac, so I have no doubts about what it can do. Finally, so far, audio quality is great, and that new and improved front camera makes your Zoom calls look so much better. I promise to include samples in my review video that's dropping this Thursday, but before that, I have another big video dropping tomorrow, and you don't want to miss it. So you know the drill, folks. If you haven't already, subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we upload. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff, and as always, make GadgetMash.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.